Here's an event that's coming up in Madison. Anastasia from Confectionique has her Lalapin, Lalapin, Lalapin market. It means rabbit. It's French for rabbit. I looked it up. It's on March 15th through the 18th, and that's going to be at Confectionique. You can RSVP on her Facebook events page, or you can go to confectionique.com, and all of the market dates and hours and everything is listed there. So that's the Lalapin Easter spring-themed market event happening at Confectionique March 15th through the 18th. Now here's the show. I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. I talked the last time about the benefits of having a physical space instead of just selling online. Everyone talked about how seeing the work in public makes a huge difference. But what about insurance? Not only for you, but for the items that you display. Now doing this podcast, I don't have to think about that. It all goes into the cloud and it's protected by fairy dust and unicorn farts and stuff like that. At least that's the current method of thinking or something. That's how I explain it to people. I actually thought about using a sound effect for that line, but I figured it would be really dumb. I even have like an old record book story chime effect that I could have used, but I decided against it. Okay, so what about planning for the future, like emergencies or health issues? How does someone do that? With my wife's cancer this past year, I'm not sure how we would have dealt with that if we didn't have a medical plan. So the question this week is, what risks do you take? This question actually made Mia from the Stone Fence laugh. Like, uh, <laughs> if it fails miserably, that that's a risk I take. All right. <laughs> so. like, well, like, what about insurance for the artist? Insurance for yourself? I have business insurance for any catastrophe. If something happens in the space and their artwork is damaged, my insurance would cover that. I don't have insurance for myself. I get that. You know, health insurance. We're too small. Okay. It doesn't exist. I'm on my husband's, and most people that work here have it from either another job or their spouse. I do take something every month and put it in a retirement fund. Emergencies, I just hope they don't happen because there's not a big cushion for emergencies. Just roll with it. I do. For Laura at Anthology, the cost to replace goods is a standard insurance policy. She also contributes to an IRA. That's all what it would cost to replace the goods. Okay. You know, that's just a standard business insurance policy. Okay, that so doesn't change insurance. for okay. us. You no, know, now we have more wholesale items. That's it's the, the insurance company. It's the same to them. A few years after we, the business was still going. You know, we basically gave ourselves a raise in order to be contributing to our IRAs. Kyle from Pieces Unimagined has the artists insure themselves also, mainly because it's huge items that go into people's homes. But he also has coverage for theft. Even in the case of theft, that's that's their deal. We have almost none of that. We did have trouble the first couple months, and then we learned how to put a lid on it. We're lifting stuff like this. Really? Yeah, it was huh. like we became a magnet. I'm like, that is going to stop. One guy, I even watched him do it, huh. and it was mustache you know, wax. Like, really? You're going to steal mustache wax? But that doesn't happen anymore. Tammy at Hatch Art House says it comes with the space. The ones that work is in here, it's insured, but if it's, once it leaves, it's not. Okay. And, and then it's up to the artist. Do you require <laughs> the artist to also have their own insurance on their work? Some no. Don't? Okay. We're not that fancy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you plan for things like emergencies and retirement? Well, I... No. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, I'm trying to save some money, but I did just buy a house. So oh. that's, I guess that's my, my uh, future investment. It's a two flat, so I rent out half of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you are. So you got yourself two floors, but you're renting part of it out. Yeah. Oh. At booth 121, Leah and Rebecca ensure everything, but they also suggest the artists should have their own. For them, retirement is something they want to do in this coming year. I think more of the risk now is as we have grown, we've invested more into wholesale. So it's putting up that initial amount of money to 
for a product, not knowing if people are going to like it or not. That's yeah. where I see the risk. That's and the big risk. Yeah. Risk. Rebecca cutting down hours at work. Like, oh, <laughs> you know, it's, oh, right. Are we going to be able to pay <laughs> ourselves? You know, because we did go a year without really pay, taking ourselves. a paycheck. My list of goals for 2018 mm-hmm. is to start investing in some kind of retirement for the both of us. It's emergencies, thank God. Both of our husbands have good health insurance, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. we're covered there, hopefully. <laughs> and, um, and we really are doing well enough. If something minor were to happen, we could handle it. But it's definitely something that you're working up to. Yeah, and again, that, it, that was the res- here, this needs to be paid, and then we're going to sit down and talk to her and figure out how to move things forward and yeah. the 18 account. The account. so everything is we kind of start moving towards that direction of yep. regular this is a real consistent job patients. And yeah. Yeah. yeah damn it we're worth it yeah. <laughs> Talking with John at Mother Fools, they have been one of the places that had to rely on insurance a few times already. Once because of a burglary, and the second time, which was probably a little more known to the public, when a car crashed right into the front of the building. He said he's learned a lot because of this. We've always carried a fine arts rider on our insurance, so we pay a little extra for that. However, when this um, accident happened here, and we actually were using our insurance, we found out that contents are already covered under that. Oh, um, so our regular business insurance already covers that. And the reason we got that fine arts writer originally is either two or three months before we bought this place, there was a burglary. And oh, really? the burglars stole a bunch of quilts that were hanging in here. Hmm. You know, and really nice artisan quilts are a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, so that was a pretty major haul, you know, whoever did that. That was one of the first things I did, is made sure our insurance was going to cover that. I was out of town, just taking a little three-day break, visiting a friend in Minneapolis, and we got mm-hmm. back, is 2.45 when I went to bed. Yeah. Around 4, my phone was ringing, and it said private number. About 5.30, it rang again, and it was Stephanie. I was like, hey, what's going on? Yeah, she said, oh, well, there's been an accident at Mother Fools. We were closed. You know, no one on our end was hurt. I think there's injured people in the car that was involved. You know, how bad is it? She said, it's worse than you can imagine. Mm-hmm. She said, I'll, I'll send you a picture. And then she sent me a picture. You know, it's still dark out here. And it's lit by blue and red emergency lights. And there's an SUV in our building. You know, yeah. It's just like entirely in the building. So I'm staying with my friend Mary. We'd gone to bed so late, but we were going to get up at 10 early. We had this packed day. We are going to go to the archery range, all these different restaurants. We are going to go see a concert, a movie. Like, we just had a packed day. Mm-hmm. So she comes down from her room at 10 and says, Oh, you're already up. You ready to go? I said, I need to tell you something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, mother fools. I uh, kind of had a little accident. I was like, mm-hmm. So I told her what was up. She's like, Oh, my God, do you want to go home? I said, No, I want to stick to the plan you know, I didn't really sleep but I think let's just go until I collapse and I didn't collapse we went until one that morning huh. uh, we did everything on the list it was exactly what I needed yeah <laughs> Next I mean day, there really was nothing else you could do yeah there was nothing we weren't allowed in the space they had physically cut our electricity off like mm-hmm. yeah there's just nothing you can do until certain permits and everything is lined up I just come out of this place called Herbiferous Butcher do you know this business in Minneapolis no so it's a plant-based butcher, but you okay. go there and it looks like an old-school deli with the big glass cases, oh, cool. and here's your roast beef and your jerky and all this, but it's all plant-based. Yeah. I'm vegan, so I was like just loving seeing it and seeing that there's a line out the door and people are really into this. So I'm just kind of glowing you know, mm-hmm. off this wonderful energy. I come out of there and my mom calls me. She says, I just got home from work and I saw what's going on. And I'm like, yeah, mom, yeah, it's... It's fine. I'm up here in Minneapolis, and yeah. this disconnect between <laughs> here's mom calling to you know offer emotional support, and I'm just giddy. You right, know, it's right. like it didn't quite match up. But and plus, you had already been dealing with it for very many hours. hours. Yeah, no, right. and we already had the. Then I realized there's no way I'm going to get a loan when we're smashed to smithereens. Mm-hmm. There's no income now. So that's when I think I realized we've got to do a crowdfunding. Thing of some sort. Yeah, we figured out what the minimum would be to get us through payroll for the next cycle, and that's what we asked for. I was wondering how you came up with that. Okay. Yeah, because 
I knew that long term our insurance was going to cover all the reconstruction, but they were definitely not going to cover the payroll that we owed for the previous two weeks. And then I think part of why I was so giddy when my mom called is I periodically was checking on my phone and seeing the crowdfund, you know, and I think we had maybe just exceeded our goal when my mom called me. So I remember it was a fast turnover. Yeah, even fixing the place, it was just like, they did it already? <laughs> Some long hours. Oh my god. Our normal contractor, Brent George, he's a great artist. We've had his work in here before. He's a sculptor. And he just happened to be between jobs. So it worked. He was able to commit to three weeks. Not, the, not as long as he thought it would take, but yeah, we just figured it out on the fly. Kind of had to. Yeah, one thing, <laughs> yeah, but it was nice because we had the luxury of getting a lot of fix-it-ups done that normally you just can't do when you're functioning day to day. So John mentioned the purpose of a fine arts writer. I really didn't have any idea what he was talking about at the time. To me, a writer is a list of requirements a musician sends the venue, like a bowl of green M&Ms and things like that. So I had to look it up. Here's what I found, and remember, I'm just reading this, I don't really know anything about it. An insurance writer, also referred to as a floater, is an optional add-on to an insurance policy. In some cases, it provides protection for things that may not be covered by a standard policy. For example, when you inherit a valuable item, become a collector, or you buy something like an engagement ring or fine arts, it's a good idea to consider how your insurance policy may help protect it. You may benefit from a rider if you find that certain belongings are worth more than your current coverage limits. There, end of reading, that's what that means. Next, I talked with Tammy from Bohemian Bobble. She wishes there were certain things that she could have covered by her insurance. I wish I could insure my thumbs. <laughs> Talk about it all the time. I'm like, why can't I get an insurance yeah. policy for Models my Models can insure their legs. Yeah, you know, why like, can't I do that? I think you should be able to. Yeah, because um, if my thumbs go, I'm, I'm in a world of hurt. Yeah. <laughs> but I do have an insurance policy that covers me when I'm at a show, when I'm traveling to or from a show. Oh, yeah, I've got a ton of coverage, right. which most artists, I highly recommend it because you just never know. You never know. No. Yeah. One person falls in your booth and bumps their head. You don't want them coming after your house. Yeah, we're planning for retirement. I mean, I'm lucky that I, I have a partner, my husband, who's got a, a decent job and has good retirement. And I have good retirement for my previous job. Yeah. So we just actually met with somebody this year to, to get all that squared away. But it's yeah. scary when you work for yourself. There's, I mean, especially I'm not out to make a million dollars. I just want to be able to maintain my lifestyle, which is by no means extravagant. I just want to be able to do the things I want to do. Hopefully have a little nest egg mm -hmm. when I'm an old lady. Yeah. And you, do you set anything aside for emergencies? Not like, really. Okay. No. Yeah. That's what my credit card is for. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not making that much money then. yet. Right. <laughs> Anastasia of Confectionique was lucky enough to already have a retirement plan in place by the time the shop went into full swing. Through my retirement, uh, great insurance through that. So that part is fine. What's nice about our model is that if for some reason confectioning just is no longer interesting to people and people stop coming, it's not going to affect us financially, oh. really. We planned in a way with this shop that it, everything was not going to be make or break on the success of Confectionique. How so? Well, you just plan your retirement See, in my circumstance, I worked full-time, yeah. my husband worked full-time, we socked away our retirement, kind of all separate from this. And I know that not everyone's in that position. There's a lot of young entrepreneurs who have put their heart and soul, money, investment, everything into their place. And so it would kill me if all of a sudden people didn't like coming here anymore. I mean, I would, mm -hmm. I would find that very devastating. But financially, it wouldn't be devastating. And that is not the case for a lot of young entrepreneurs out there. I'm in a unique circumstance in that I've sort of done my time with my master's degree and my career. And my husband kind of did the same with his work. And so this, there's just not a lot financially that uh, will harm us if, mm. if, if this doesn't continue. Sarah says 1-1000 has its own property and liability, but the creators have their own insurance for their individual spaces there. She says it's a good thing to do as a creator overall, but what about retirement? 1-1000 has its own property and liability insurance, and everybody who rents here is expected to carry their own. 
oh. property and liability insurance. Really? Yep. Oh, okay. There's all sorts of different levels of liability. So like we rent and so our landlord carries some insurance, but if if something happened where we lost everything, they wouldn't be liable for that unless it was their fault for mm -hmm. some reason. And same thing, like if something happened here and all of our studio renters lost everything, we wouldn't be liable unless I purposely did something. It's really cheap to get insurance. Is it? It is, yeah. Okay. For any of our members who are running businesses, even at home, the one thing they don't realize is if they're making their goods at home or making art at That's home, you need to tell your insurance company that you're running a business from home because if anything happened and they found out later, none of that would be covered and you'd be screwed. Huh. Yeah. Like, it's just a simple rider often that you're running a home-based business to yeah. add and that, that sometimes that rider is like an extra $30 a year. It's like nothing. But... Even if you, like, let's say there was a fire and you lost your computer and they found out, like, you used, it was your work computer for this mm -hmm. business that you were doing, they'd be like, well, you never told us you were running a business, so sorry, it's not covered. Hmm. I know, I know, right? <laughs> but it's, it's like, what would you do if you had 100 items that you had made at home and it wasn't covered or even at your studio? I think most people just assume it's covered by their own insurance. I'm so surprised that the insurance company is not unreasonable. Yeah, right, right. I am not an insurance agent. <laughs> I do have to say that right now. Um, talk to your own insurance agent. It is something important to know. And the other thing I didn't realize, too, I learned this when I was getting into upholstery, is that having some sort of liability insurance when you're shipping products to people is also important. Mm. Even if I upholstered a chair and sent it to somebody and the leg broke off, they got hurt like they could sue mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. and for a small business that could ruin your entire future but the things you don't think about yeah no and yeah. i didn't and when you say it it's like well duh yeah <laughs> and so for like okay four hundred dollars a year it's it's significant but it's not a lot of money for the headache in the first year especially is critical i don't know i'm starting to see a lot of my friends businesses shut down now and that's hard to watch and to know that only like 17 percent of small businesses are profitable and to know that 60 percent of startups fail those are really scary statistics and um so right now my husband is saving for retirement for both of us okay um and that is a goal of mine is to have retirement money again mm -hmm. because um i'm 36 now and so i've still got a little time to be a little risky but you're right, like a lot of the people in this group don't even save for retirement. And what's gonna happen in like 30 years when none of us have it, right? And this was actually a specific question for my wife because she was curious. I, I have a tendency to only stay at jobs or be interested in jobs for maybe a year or so. Mm -hmm. So I keep moving my 401ks. Finally, we got an accountant and the guy was just like, well, why don't you just run your own retirement plan instead yeah. of doing this? And we started doing that. Just kind of interested in the fact like you can do that. Yeah. You know? So yeah. that's why she was like, well, what about these small businesses? They don't have someone running their 401k or... And we're um, in the creative side, so we're like... Right. Just give me a summary and tell me we're doing the right thing and I'll be happy. Next week, I'll be talking about the big issue I haven't even considered yet. If you haven't already, subscribe to the show at AmericanBandito.com slash subscribe. Or listen on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, YouTube, or, and this is a new one, if you have an Amazon Echo or a Google Home device, just say, play the American Bandito podcast. I know, right? The music is by Romcom. To hear more, go to AmericanBandito.com slash music. I'll be back next week, so until then, so long. Mm-hmm.